Hi guys, welcome to this little tutorial on how to install Star Wars Rogue Squadron, which is a game from 1996. It's a great game, I used to play it a lot when I was a small kid, and um, some people actually asked me how to how I managed to install it on Windows 64-bit um, versions. So Windows 7 64-bit, Windows 8 64-bit, it should work on all of them. Uh, now there are a whole lot of methods to install the game, such as using a emulator or um, using a virtual PC. Which basically is that you are running Windows XP within Windows 8 or Windows 7 or anything similar to that. Those are all the hardware. So I'm going to show you the easy way right here. So enjoy the video. Now this will be a tutorial for you um, if you have got the CD itself. So if you do not have the CD then um, at the end there will be an uh, alternative method for you to install Star Wars Rogue Squadron. But first we are going to install from CD-ROM if you have got the CD. Or the .iso file itself, which can function as CD. But more about that later on. So first, what you want to do is go to your C disk, create a folder called Games. Now I've already got this folder, and I've got Star Wars Racer in the, along with some recordings. And um, recordings, not really of much um, importance right now. Anyhow, so you create a folder named Games with capital G. Don't forget to use the capital G. Okay, so when you've done it, you insert your CD of Star Wars Rogue Squadron into your computer and you go to your D disk, which will be your Star Wars Rogue Squadron CD. Now what you want to do is copy Rogue from the CD, don't, don't cut it, just copy it, and put it in your games folder, okay? There you go, now you've got this, okay? So what you want to do next is you want to copy all those files except for outrun.inf to the new folder, the rogue folder. So you get this, and then it will start copying everything and all that stuff. And when, once you've done that, um, you're not quite yet finished. So what we want to do after that is um, go to, uh, I believe it's install, yes, it's install. You copy all of those files, all of them. And you put them in here as well. And if it asks you to, um, to replace a file, just do it. Just say yes to replace the file. Now, why do you not need to do anything with DirectX? Um, you actually need to keep the CD itself insert to your computer to properly run this game. Now, if I want, I can run the game already, but you cannot quite do that yet. Why not? Um, let me explain that to you. So, right now you've got all of the files in here. And if you launch a rogue squadron.x, um, you'll most likely get an error that you are not running a 16 or a 30 bit system of uh, version of Windows. And you do actually need a 16 or 32 bit version of Windows to properly run the game. But I found my way around it for you guys. So, what you want to do is you go to this folder. Uh, let me just quickly delete this one. There we go. So you open, um, you, you you make a new a new a new file with Notepad. So let me open Notepad. There you go. So you open a new file, and what you want to do is I want you to go to the description of this video and copy all of this right here. You copy it, paste it right there in um, inside of your um, Notepad file. And then what you want to do is not save it as a .txt so in a text file. You need to save it as a registry file. So you go to your C disk, save it right there in your C disk as rs.rec. Uh, there we go, rs.rec. Don't change anything about this, just keep it as a .txt and coding nc and then just save the file. Uh, now I cannot put it right there, so you can also put it in your documents, it doesn't really matter. Just put it in your documents if you're not computer administrator. I am administrator, but sometimes it will give you the error. So when you've done this, you go to your documents, you open your .rec file with your right mouse button, and then you open it with registry editor, and you press yes, and you press yes again. Now right here it says in Dutch that all the keys and values are added to my registry. And now you will be able to launch the game as long as you've got the CD-ROM itself in your computer as well. So let me prove this to uh, by, by going to my um, games folder 
Rogue Squadron. Rogue Squadron dot X. Now you probably will see a black screen. Okay, so my my capture software actually crashed when um, I opened Rogue Squadron. That's because um, the the program I'm using to record the game um, is not a program I'm using right now to show this tutorial. Anyhow, the game will launch, and if it does launch, if you still have got issues, right click Rogue Squadron X, go to Properties, which is at the bottom. I'm again, I'm sorry that I'm in the Dutch version of Windows. Not sure how I can change that. Now you want to go to this spot right here, compatibility mode, uh, compatibility mode. Take this box and put it to Windows 85 or Windows XP or whatever you want. It's working for me so I'm not going to do that. And you also want to use reduced color mode, 16-bit 65536 color. And um, also you want to take run program as administrator right here. If you do all of that, then the game should launch and otherwise um, there's either something wrong with your PC or PC will probably not be a 32 or a 64-bit version of Windows uh, or you just messed something up because this tutorial should work for you. Now, since we've done this part for everyone who has got the CD-ROM, <coughs> for everyone who has not got the CD-ROM itself, but who has got an ISO file, you will not have a D-disk, so the CD disk. You'll have a um, F double dot disk, so this will not be D, but it will be F. And one thing you need to change then is go to your rs.rec file, and all you need to change is this. Change this D right here to an F, and um, I'm pretty sure that's the only difference. Oh yes, yeah, D-pad right here also should be F. Anything else that I missed? Um, drive with 3D3. Um, nah, I'm pretty sure that was everything. So if you have got not, if you haven't got the CD itself, and that's everything you need to do to um, make it running with a .iso file. And if you don't have a .iso file either, with just the game files itself, I'm afraid you can't run the game at that point. So yeah. You really do need an ISO file or a um, or the CD itself. Now, hopefully this tutorial was useful for you. If it was, then consider liking, subscribing, or fair sharing. Whatever, guys. Then I'd really like to thank you for watching, and see you next time.